chair, so our vice chair will have to start. With right. Yep. But yes, and I spoke with Hannah earlier today because um, we were actually going to carpool Don't together. Um, so there are a couple of things, a couple of changes to the agenda. Yes. Um, so you had a couple. We want to strike these two items. Okay, so we're striking from the agenda approve facilities reserve funds and approve operational reserve funds because we did those earlier in the year mm -hmm. and then um, I am changing the meeting purpose because <laughs> we're not going to be talking about ends report and review of whatever that and review of ends um, so I just was looking at what we had on here um, and I also wanted to just add we had um, next steps including July retreat scheduling but since Hannah and I may end up needing to plan that I would like the board to have a discussion about what the board wants to do in that retreat or at least give some parameters or maybe decide if the board wants to have a committee that plans the retreat. Um, but we've got to have some discussion about the retreat. So I'm adding that to the agenda. Um, and then where, where would you like us to add that, Anne? under board education. Uh, and we can put that um, maybe after we could do it way at the bottom. It'll be the last item Sounds good. on the bottom. Uh, and then there was one other change that I wanted to make. Oh, the, the EL 2.7 monitoring report was put in the wrong section. So that's not a policy decision, that's a monitoring report we have to approve it's the second reading so that should go under monitoring the organization so I just I'm going to move that to there um, and that was it so for the meeting purpose then I've written down a monitoring report and discuss board retreat I feel like uh, that's not quite right though I had board retreat and board processes and website organization okay because that's um, sort of the bulk of what we're going to be doing. Very good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move on to public comment. Do we have? There's no one here, but I would like public? to make a public comment. Uh, I guess go, go ahead <laughs> um, it was Hannah Aries's intention to commemorate June 19th uh, this, at this meeting and in her absence I'd like to um, say that on June 19th we recommit ourselves to the work of equity equality and justice and we celebrate the centuries of struggle courage and hope that have brought us to this time of progress and possibility that work has been led throughout our history by abolitionists and educators civil rights advocates and lawyers, courageous activists and trade unionists, public officials and everyday Americans who have helped make real the ideals of our founding documents for all. And there is still more work to do. So on this June 19th, uh, 2024, uh, OSSD commits itself to continuing the equity work that we have begun. Thank you. Okay, seeing uh, no other public comment, we will uh, move forward. Uh, the first thing on the agenda here is the bus negotiation committee. Um, so that was you, Ryan, and Hannah, correct? Yes. So the, um, in our 
pack. Did it make it into that packet? I know that it was emailed to us. Um, yes. The, and there's, is it the proposal? Yeah, the, we that had two proposals emailed to us. Two proposals. There's, um, just, there's just the one, and there's a hard copy here if everybody wants the hard copy. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Is and this, I believe. Is this the right one? Let's take a look. <clears throat> There are two. So, so they look very similar, but um, there are two different figures proposed to us by the bus drivers. This is one of them. The other one is probably in our email. Uh, it's um, double sided. Well, it's double sided. It, it oh, okay. is the two different ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. It's just tricky. Yeah. <clears throat> so, with these, um, assuming we've all had a chance to look these over, I think we're looking forward to a presentation from you folks tonight yes. um, about essentially justifying this. Um, can I just ask a clarifying question? Is this mm -hmm. something that we discuss in open because it's contract negotiation? Uh, Anna had mentioned the executive session. Mm -hmm. um, it's a possible yeah. executive session. So if there are any details that would um, should be protected by employment law, we need to move into executive session. So for instance, I think we can't discuss compensation in open, but then we can because it is not agreed upon yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So do we discuss it in open and then vote an executive or do we do it all in executive? Opposite. Oh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> so we need a movement to... So we need a motion to go into executive session and invite the transportation folks who want to mm -hmm. propose. Well, I move that we go into executive discuss... Uh, move to go into executive session to discuss this uh, proposal of renegotiation of bus driver salaries and hear your presentation. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing none, we'll go into executive session. To move into executive session, can I just mute it or do I need to close it down? Uh, I think you have to close, close it? it out. Yeah. And um, do you want to invite Amy? to executive session? Uh, I think that would be appropriate as the HR person. Seems fair. Yeah. I think that would be all right. Is, are you opposed to having her? No, I think the HR would be involved. Okay. Um, because that's so, off. The regular meeting Ooh. minutes, and he's doing his executive session. <laughs> <laughs> You're earning your keep. So now we have to wait and get back into the other. Okay, so I'm going to leave executive session. Sam, I sent you the link. Okay, yeah, I was in the other meeting before, but nobody was there. So. We, were, we were in that one, then we went to this one, and we're going back to that one. This was an uh, executive session. Okay. <laughs> okay, he's gone. He's gone. Now we're going to find out if he was in the right one. Yeah. Okay. And you all don't have to up, sit. Okay. Thank you very much Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you. Uh, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Next up. Uh, we have the ENDS committee report, and I believe the ENDS committee met in May. Um, and I'm, I'm removing the July retreat scheduling. That's gonna, that, because we're doing that, basically the board retreat stuff at the end of this, section of the meeting, we don't need to talk about that in this section. So I wasn't at that meeting, but Rachel 
Anna and I were there. Neil and Heather? Were you at that one? No. I was not invited. I would be happy to go, but I was oh. not invited to that one. Uh -oh. Wait, you were, you're you were supposed to be on that committee. I'm happy to stay on that committee. Oh. <laughs> so um, did is one of you going to report out on? I on sent the, the meeting minutes, and they were in the packet. I mean, I'm. Um, and we had a summary of prior things we've done, and we an outline of. Are there any yeah, questions for that? And it was, I sent it to Hannah. Should be included in the packet. I, I didn't see that it was included in the packet. The, right, so yeah, that, that we're either. not going to be able to discuss now since it's not there. So we're going to strike it for next time? So we'll strike it for next time. Are there any questions on the end, for the ENDS committee from other board members? Seeing none, I'm going to move along to uh, the Ownership Linkage Committee, and that is... Uh, Sam, I saw the line. You had no response. No response from the letter. Uh, any emails come in? No emails? Nothing on the front porch forum? No. Mm -hmm. District office, any response from the Ownership Linkage? Yeah. So... Yeah, no, we didn't have any responses. So either it was hit at a time when people were busy or, or we didn't have anything to your back tonight. No. Okay. Um, but I had here um, the discussion of possible student non voting representation on the board. Mm -hmm. Great. I, um, so I spoke with Hannah about getting this on the um, agenda for tonight as part of ownership linkage. Um, many districts have student representation on the board. They tend to be um, non-voting, but they contribute to discussions, conversations, etc. Forgive me, um, I had um, a tooth thing today, so um, forgive me uh, for any language <laughs> errors I'm making. Thank you. Um, so I've invited tonight um, Ryan. Uh, to be here with us, Ryan Squire is present. This is a student I just graduated from in the class of 2024. And Ryan, uh, I think, would have been a fantastic addition to our board last year. He did independent work on uh, equity and equity in education. And I've asked him to come and just speak to the board briefly on this topic. What do you have? You would like to present some slides? Can I ask you to join this meeting mm -hmm. from your computer and present your slides in that way so that anyone who joins at home, such as Sam Hooper, can see your slides also? Yes. So you're going to have to send him the link. What does he have? He can read it right off the board oh, yeah, there. Yeah, right. Okay. So the code is OZC-MQIQ-HBW. Signal me when you're ready, Ryan. So I'm also on the board now of Mountain Views uh, down in Woodstock. Uh, I was elected in on March, in March, and there are two um, non-voting student members on the board. And it's really lovely. They come every time and they have uh, something written and prepared for us about the student experience, things that are going on that we might not otherwise know <laughs> without their contributions. All right, is that the signal? You ready? Okay. I think you need to leave an aid, maybe. Okay, no, I, I shouldn't have to. Um, oh, you know, you hit present. Why don't you first join the meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Kalman. <laughs> um, does it matter, do you know, if he's on a Orange Southwest account or a Yeah, I think you have to do Orange Southwest. Yeah, can, yeah. You, can you switch and do it from your Orange Southwest? Because then I think it'll be such a good one. I think anyone. No, it, I don't know. For when we're on a network for some reason, there's no weird thing. Like, I've tried it before. Personal, I don't want to do it the same. There you are. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, great. We can see where you are. If you'd like to come up to the board, that would be yeah. fine also. Watch it. I can bring this for you if you want. That would be great. And this is so appropriate for June 19th. Mm -hmm. um, before you arrived, we had a recognition of the fact that it is a holiday today. Thank you. Okay. So, hello. Uh, first, I want to thank Ms. Waller and the school board for giving us time to present. Uh, it really speaks to this district's commitment uh, to equity um, for all students, uh, as I said, as Ryan, as Ms. Waller said. Uh, I'm here to present my senior project uh, and the work that I did with that. Uh, so, for my senior project, I compiled a list of suggestions uh, as to how the equity policy could be improved and made more equitable uh, based on issues that I noticed in it. Uh, so my first suggestion uh, is that uh, the policy states that the board will keep itself accountable in situations where equity is needed, um, and I find that uh, uh, that is not a system that can work. Uh, there is very much too much in, in sorry, excuse me, too much insula, insularity in this system for it to not be biased. And therefore, my recommendation is that there should be a committee formed of community and community members and students that can report to the board on issues of equity. Uh, additionally, uh, regular equity, equity assessments like the one that happened in 2020 should be instated to keep the board accountable and the school district accountable for equity. Uh, my second recommendation, um, our equity policy needs a more specific and in-depth uh, description and definition of what educational equity is. Uh, the definition of equity in the OSSD e equity policy is each student receives the resources and educational opportunities they need to learn and thrive. That's great. It's not very specific as to what resources or how they're allocated. Uh, so I recommend that our district either takes the district, the uh, de definition of educational equity from the Essex Westford School District, which I will have in the next slide, uh, or uses that to reword its definition of educational equity. This is a very good definition. Uh, here is the Essex Westford definition of educational equity. Um, I have a sentence from it that I would like to read aloud because I think it's very good. Uh, equity prioritizes visibility, the voice, and empowerment of people and groups who are harmed by inequitable rules and behaviors by requiring fair, respectful, and just systems and practices. Uh, my third suggestion. Um, is one of the biggest problems with the policy is it refers to collecting data there a lot, um, but it never describes what data is being collected, how it is being collected, by whom it's being collected, uh, or what is being done with it. Um, and I think 
that that should be uh, reworded into statements that describe very clearly what did, what data is being collected, who it is being collected from, where it is being collected, and what methods are being used to collect it. Fourth, I have, this is one of my biggest suggestions, is the language in the ACRI policy is great for a policy document, um, but it is very bureaucratic and um, inaccessible to the everyman, which is a problem for an equity policy specifically because it is inherently inequitable if not all people can access it. Um, so to fix that, I recommend that there is a glossary of terms probably at the end of the equity policy that give definitions of important terms in the equity policy so that um, anyone can understand it. Um, fifth, um, it is stated in the policy that OSSD will provide ongoing and continuous professional development at all organizational levels to support employees to engage in culturally, culturally responsive practices and delivery of quality, culturally relevant instruction. That's very good. However, nowhere is it stated that those are mandatory, um, mm -hmm. and nowhere is it stated that it is for all school staff. Um, and I. My suggestion is that it, the language of the equity policy be reworded to make it clear that they are in fact mandatory and are in fact, or they should be for all staff as well, um, every, anyone who interacts with students. Um, um, additionally, uh, some mention should be made that equity trainings are so that students do not have to keep staff accountable for equity. Um, it is on the district's hands to do that. Um, and additionally, I believe the, the curriculum of these trainings should be publicly available so that, again, the, the community can keep the school district accountable in these teachings. Um, thank you for your time and for your commitment to educational equity. Yeah. Are there any questions, I guess? Um, my only question is, is this a document that you're able to share with well, the board? Or? Well, do, uh, Ryan uh, did his whole senior project on this. So he had a trifold, that he had, you know, um, a bibliography that he <laughs> used. And, um, and when I saw him at senior projects, I said, oh, will you please come out and, and just speak mm -hmm. to the board on this topic. And how timely, this just happened to be on June 19th. So pretty excited about that. But I, uh, so the, the request that, could you share this information with them? Yes, uh, I can, if I send it to you, mm -hmm. could you then? Of course. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And forgive me, Ryan, it has been about 20 years since I did my senior project. Mm -hmm. But back then, we were required to do a research paper and to have a mentor. Did you have to do a research paper on this? Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see that, if that's available. Of course. Yeah. And I'm also curious, who was your mentor for this? I worked with Jessica Brown. Um, she is the Title IX coordinator mm -hmm. at uh, Vermont Law, as well as she's a professor there as well. Right. She's a wonderful person. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, and also, I just, I'm hoping that this would show the board some of the value of having more contact with our yeah. um, our high school students who would be, have the ability to participate with you uh, on some of these topics. We did discuss this in yes. the past of having student representation on the board, and I think we've all been fairly interested in having that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I mean, I think it would be interesting to find out how other schools manage um, finding individuals who would be interested in holding a position like that. Yeah, would that be something that they would vote on, you know, applicants that are... So what I was thinking to do, I was in Mr. Kelman's class earlier uh, last week, and someone, uh, he knew of someone who would volunteer. Mm -hmm. So then what I'd be curious about is how many, if we put it out in front of students, how many would volunteer? So if we only got two volunteers, right, we'd have two. 
But if we got 10 volunteers, we need to come up with a method by which we either interview and select or there's a voting process. Mm -hmm. I want to be careful that it's not a popularity contest, right, of, among students. Mm -hmm. So um, other than that, though, I'd want, I guess I'd want the board's thinking on how you would choose students if there were more than two volunteers. Yeah. Well, Either, yeah. Or a good having experience them submit, for everyone. Um, like submit a paragraph as to why they have interest in sitting on the board, but having identifying information mm -hmm. removed. Does great. that make sense? You know, yeah. like Sounds great. Submit, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a, Essentially a cover letter yeah, and, uh, basically, and an but, interview. But we wouldn't know great. who it is. Um, right. And hopefully Ted and Ben you can help us with that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Absolutely. And uh, before, you know, just to acknowledge the work Ryan did, I'm wondering if the board would be interested in uh, looking into some of his suggestions. I think we should put that on the agenda for yes. next. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, and you're our equity. Unfortunately, yes. Person. <laughs> no, not really, so, unfortunately. No, it's, it's the, uh, it was, yes, yes. <laughs> so. it, it, that title has come with some <laughs> challenges, yeah. um, but I embrace the work fully. Uh, it's just it's there have been some challenges. What is the next step in getting uh, student representation on the board? I mean, I imagine we have to wait until the school year starts. So what I would recommend that, uh, you know, uh, the way it seems like other districts have done it is they put it out publicly to families and students that this is an opportunity with some criteria that we're looking for one student in 12th grade, one in 11, one in 10, or some, whatever, mm -hmm. because you, ideally they won't all be in the same grade band, mm -hmm. right? So that when one graduates, you have one opening. Mm -hmm. The same way we do the board seats, right? And then request volunteers and from there vet the candidates. So the messaging from the board is really the first step, like sort of an invitation for nominations. Is there anything that we would have to change within our policies? No, they'd be non-voting okay. um, members of the board, I don't think, right? I don't, no, no. Yeah, I think we would almost have to come up with a small job description in that mm -hmm. sense of like it's for mm -hmm. this calendar school year, not voting, the expectation that they attend meetings, that kind of, with whatever you want them to present on, 10 minute presentation, whatever. So should we create a does the, does the ownership linkage committee want to take that on as a, as a, um, thank you, as a chart, part of your charge, come up with a process and procedure for Adding. I can beg you can maybe back me up on this, but I'm pretty sure that Molly's super not when she was here, I believe she graduated in 2013, so somewhere in the 2011, 2012, 2013 era. I think that there were a couple years of student representation, so there might be records of how that was done. Oh, thank years you. ago. What's that? Was the board, the board a, changed significantly. Oh, that's true. Yes, that is true. There were individual boards. Yes. yes. And there was more of a student council then too, correct? There was. There is a student leadership. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. I think, I can't remember if I mentioned this to you or not, but we have a sort of new reconstituted student leadership structure that I'm not sure that that's necessary. I don't know. I mean, I think you know, you need to make your own decision. Spread the wealth around. Yeah, I don't think it has to be. I think there are some other mm -hmm. like structures within the high school at least that would be good places to, to kind of message and recruit from. But um, but that does exist. And I think they use a similar process to what you are all are describing to right. have people who are not, yeah, so it's not just right. a like, popularity contest. Um, right, but. and the, the ownership linkage, I mean, there are several districts around the state that have student reps. So you, we could look at what other boards do in terms of how they get students. I mean, it. I mean, maybe you have a voting process just because that, I mean, it is when you, when you go to, you run for the school board. So, you know, maybe we do have a voting thing, although I don't know if students would say or teachers would say that becomes just a I wouldn't want to say popularity thing. But at the same time, we want students to have a sense of 
if you're going to vote for somebody, you're going to find out what they stand for. You're going to ask them why they want to do it. I mean, that's part of our civic. Hopefully, we're, we're not like, we're, we want to teach young people to be thinking about you know why they're and I and I and I think young people are not just popularity seeking. I, I also know, think it I might be a little. I mean, no offense to you all, but this might not feel like the most scintillating thing for a teenager to do. <laughs> 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 so, I think I think the ones who put themselves out there might be a somewhat <laughs> self-selecting group. Yeah, yeah. But if, yeah. We, no. if we do do an election, my recommendation would be I'm that sorry. we charge um, totally. the student leadership, our student council, with running the election. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a collaborative piece, because I'd be concerned, like, they're going to have to be working closely. Mm -hmm. Also, whoever the board members are, are going to have to be. Because there's a wide number of students from every grade level that are on it. There's alternates. Um, and it didn't seem to be a popular, it didn't turn out to be a popularity yeah. contest. Yeah. Um, and there was something of an application government. process, right? It wasn't, there was a, no, is that, no, no it was just a vote, no. yeah. It was okay. like asking in your advisory what grade levels, you know, right. what you wanted to do, and then whose names went forth. So there are two standing representatives and then like three alternates, I think, from each grade level. So if you're not cool. planning dances, I feel like the yeah. popularity contest yeah. piece right. is maybe less. Yeah. less and they're not. Yeah. They don't do anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can look into it's that for ownership linkage and come up with that process. 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 And and bring that back and see how we feel about it. But I think it's definitely something that would add value to our board. So mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank really you. Really appreciate your Can I just ask, when is the next meeting when you might be discussing equity policy or if folks wanted to go a meeting in July? We don't usually have a regular meeting in July. Right. Probably not until August. August. Yeah, so, so maybe not until August. Yeah, yeah. and that it depends great. on what's, yeah. we'll be creating an annual agenda, so you'll, we could add that in specifically in the annual agenda for the next cycle. Okay, I've put in the notes that the ownership linkage committee will present the next steps to the board in <laughs> August. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for allowing space for that. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Just one note that we are running. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Yeah, the, the timing. I wasn't at the agenda planning meeting. I'm just... Uh, but maybe I should have changed those numbers when we were uh, adjusting the agenda. But anyway, uh, these next things should, well, unless people are, um, have real uh, differences of opinion, um, everyone, I had before I left, I was away for the month of May, but um, I had, uh, because of the, the, the training that I was doing from January through to um, the last one was this past Monday with the policy governance folks, one of the things we did was we looked at um, how uh, different boards put stuff on their, their websites. And our website, so I went through our website and was looking at kind of the way things were, and I had a lot of recommendations. I don't know if other people have looked at our website under the board section, but there are a bunch of non-functioning links, and then there are important documents like our monitoring, our ENDS reports, None of those are showing on our website, our, and our policies aren't, or our procedures aren't necessarily on there either. And we are going to need to be adding an additional procedure for when we, uh, if we have a, a mess up with open meeting law, um, they now want uh, a procedure or a place on our website where we describe what happened and we what we did to to uh, uh, make amends for it. So um, anyway, 
you all should have gotten, and I'm looking for it in here. Um, I I went through and I just explained what what I would recommend that we change. It's um, this that's in yellow. Uh, that no, that's the other thing that I put in there. The other. I saw it in the other, in the electronic one. I don't think it's in here. But I guess she didn't print it out here. Did did everybody look at the electronic one? Yeah. Can I ask a, I mean, what sense is Sure. But is there, um, like, who over, who oversees the OSD website in general? Like, who goes through that? Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for tolerating my personal <laughs> care over here. Um, Todd Lewis, okay. uh, who is here tonight. Mm -hmm. Should we call him in? No, I'm just okay. kind of curious because like, I did notice again, um, you know, in general, I do agree with Anne. I do think that there are like um, some things where, even as a board member going to our section, sometimes I'm confused about like where am I going to find the information I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then just noticing like the calendar things on the calendar that don't aren't appearing um so i do agree like i i agree with the recommendations you had for the website as far as if there are links that are not working those should be taken off if there's a way to make things more clear as to what they're describing that should be included does todd have the capacity to maintain this uh, believe so I mean we could ask him to come in and see yeah. if he's I, I mean that was I think the plan had been we took over right we the district took over because before it was some other person was had, had been running it and now it's run through the district through Todd and he may just not that, that's why it, I put it on the agenda because I don't think he necessarily, he needs to be told, hey, put this here, put that there. Is this an approval? Um, so, um, I mean, if the board is okay with it, what I would like <laughs> is I would like a motion for the board to give me authority to sit down with them and just make those changes. I think it's that's totally great. Not yeah, I would just rather that than us. Yeah, I don't yeah. really know. Really spot. That's no. right. No. right. <laughs> You've done the labor. Let's yeah, I think the uh, ask him very nicely to do it. The that you proposed yeah. in a document that was that was submitted to the board. Yeah. I will. Uh, I make a motion to um, accept those changes, and Anne, you will work with Todd on updating the website to reflect the changes that you submitted. Yeah. And I'll work with him for whenever it was for him to do that. <laughs> what, we'll okay, Todd, I appoint you as my designee in this matter. Okay. <laughs> because the board compelled me to do this, and I des I'm making my designee. Okay. That's how right. I work. <laughs> so okay. do it for so else, do we so. have? <laughs> do we have a second for Todd's motion? Okay. Um, any discussion, further discussion? Todd, do you have any questions? Basically, it's just we were looking, I was looking, and then I shared with the board at the, the way the board information is on the website, it's not clear, and I've been doing some uh, board training on and looking at other schools' websites, so I just sort of took or what they're doing and got some ideas and this is what's in it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so any other discussion on this? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. The motion passes. Um, next up is um, the materials that we have for for our binder. Um, again, this was one of the things that we went over in this board training that I was at, is um, every, every reorg, you're supposed to um, just go over your uh, rules of procedure for your meetings and adopt them. And 
while I was doing that, there was some inconsistency, and even Kyle, um, as our board clerk, because she's she's our we call her our board clerk, but she's actually the um, the OSUD clerk designee, because mm -hmm. Ryan is our clerk, mm -hmm. but she, as the admin assistant for the district office, um, she does our minutes for us graciously. So, um, so I just clarified in our in our materials her role, just so that it makes it clear, and then um, in the essential work of boards um, because we are a small board we don't we get to follow the rules for small boards and when Chelsea and I had originally put these rules of procedure together a year or two ago um, we basically wrote them with the small board rule uh, Robert's rules for small boards we basically had used those rules when we put it together. Um, Did you say we can't use them? No, we can. We can because we're, we're, we're a tiny board. board. Yeah, because okay. we're, okay. we're, we're a small board. Um, because little things, yeah, like, they're, yeah, yeah sure they it's much that. less formal than than the true, true Robert's rules. Um, and then as I was reading through, I noticed that um, there are a few places where because we basically had taken this from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, we we forgot we didn't we didn't fix like on number eight. Uh, the board has to decide: do we want to do um, amending these rules of procedure by a two-thirds or a majority vote? Because majority, majority, majority. Okay, so uh, and majority would be six over. Five, I believe. I think that's what I figured out. Six over five. Anyway, or no? Majority is six. Majority is, Majority is five. 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 Two thirds six. would be six. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So, so that's majority is five. Just so people know what a majority is. Um, and then the same with the agendas. Yep. Um, D three majority there too. Majority. Okay, and then um, the public participation part, um, we had, um, again, as I was looking over the website, um, we have the required policies, but then there are a few recommended policies, and basically in the training that I was at, they said what you can do is you can just put it into your procedure. So I basically took the A2 policy, that's a recommended policy from the BSBA, and I put it in as our procedure for for public participation. Um, I think this is very good, as long as we make sure we're actually following this. Right, well, and it, what will happen is, I, I, can I will share this with Kyle, and she can update it, and then we can just all bring our binders. Because it, I mean, I mean, five and six were, would be the only ones that I would say that we just need to be mindful. Yeah, we're not doing those. We're not doing five, five and six. six. <clears throat> of the public participation part? Yeah, we're not doing the chair will ask for comments on agenda items before an action is taken by the board. Is this asking for public comment? Yeah. We're not asking for public comment um, on every agenda item before an action is taken. Right. A lot of times, by that time, there's list. no public here. Yeah, but even when there is public and we yeah. have yeah. topics that we're discussing, we don't ever say, is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this topic? Before we vote, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And we have a lot of time. And we don't maintain a speaker's list, and I'm assuming here on six in that last sentence, you're going to want to do majority vote rather than by two-thirds majority vote. Uh, okay. But we don't have a two-thirds. It's just an odd number. We by majority vote. Okay, so we'll get rid of that two thirds majority vote. Or so by majority vote. I think vote. these are good additions, but we just need to make sure that if we're putting these in here, that we're actually doing them. Yep. And if, yeah. 
And um, this was the other thing that I didn't know. Now, number seven in that same public participation part. Um, and I forget what Pietro said about this. And we didn't, we talked about it in that policy governance training. Was which, like which one of the about first in, ones. Are number seven. Are you wondering if OSSD board members should not be able to yeah, yeah, right, because it's awkward, and I forget what we, uh, I could re, I could, I could contact the trainers and just see what they say about that, or why don't we discuss it? What do you, what do you all think? Um, I mean, as a board member, you. I'm a member of the public. Are a member of the public. But I'll be clear, if I'm commenting as a member of the public, I'll comment as a member of the public and not as a board member. But I think when you're sitting on the board at a board meeting in the position that the board sits, you're representing the board and you speak with one voice. And That's I right. think that if one of us were to speak out. But that also means that we cannot comment on our own. Like, it, that would mean that I could never have a public comment that isn't, isn't something held by the board. Like. I can come to our own board and present myself as a member of the public and say, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, not on behalf of the board, and make a public comment. And that needs to be permitted because I'm a member of the public. And this board, rep this board, like you all represent me too, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have to be allowed to speak. It just, we just right. need to clarify whether we are speaking as a board member, whether that means moving your position in the room or, right. mm -hmm. but you have to be allowed to address the board as any other member of the public is. You don't lose right. that. You don't give up that you don't right give by being that sitting on right. the board. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a good point. I do think that we have to make sure that there's that clarity, there's that. clarity and that clear. potentially, just to keep everything clear for public view too, that you address the board as a whole, as, as a whole and from the public like physical position. position. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what? Wh how are the other, other board members feeling about this section, or should we should we run it? But it doesn't make sense to not allow it. Not allow someone to address the board. I think you can just. I think you can take out that thing about members of the OSSD board. If you are going to be speaking as a board member, then you're speaking as a board member. If you're going to be speaking as a member of the public, then you state that clearly before you make your comment, and you so do you it from a physical location. So you should be speaking as you should never be speaking then in public comment as a as board, board member. member. You should always Correct. be speaking as a member of the public. So then we would want to remove or members of the board in that case because a member of the board is not going to be making board comment during public. So we will get, so we strike. do strike strike through. strike through that one. Okay. But, and that's where our education comes in for new board members, so they don't, that they feel they have the option to address the board as a member of the public if they so want to. Does that make sense? Because we also, if, we, if we're, I think that that's just something that now we obviously understand that but somebody new to the board might be like oh i really want to make this comment but i can't because i'm whatever a board member does that make sense does that make sense i was mad one year about the about the calendar <laughs> so i had my husband come and speak at a public comment <laughs> but like what if i didn't have somebody who could do that yeah. <laughs> you <know>? on your behalf <laughs> i've been here tonight by my wife <laughs> okay um and let's see and then in G and H, oh, and H, I forgot, I had, somehow with the ad, I, I had put ad, um, I just, I somehow I deleted that <laughs> when I, when I was putting it in, because I was trying to highlight everything that I was changing. So I'm adding in there, uh, OSUD board committees are governed by the OSUD board's governance process policy 4.6, board committee principles, and Vermont open meeting law. So policy 4.6? Yeah. So that, that, it's not just plain add there in, in H. And then the, then the only other stuff there is just the, um, 
OSED clerk or their designee mm -hmm. um, because we have Kyle doing so much of the minutes work. And then the last thing is just I was going to have Todd remove this A21 from, from the board policies. So what I need from the board is just uh, a motion to authorize me to meet with Kyle if everyone is in agreement with these changes, to make these changes, and then I guess we should also um, uh, have a motion to accept them, to accept these as our rules of procedure for our meetings. Sam? Yeah, Sam? So, um, going back to Koch's point about um, those couple items, like offering public commentary before board decisions, is it my understanding that we're out of compliance by not doing that, and that if we add that, then we need to keep, we need to do it, or do we have the option of keeping that off? Um. That is, or is it like best practice? It's best practice. That's, I mean, that's what these, uh, but we as a board get to decide how we want to do public comment. But we just need to share it with the public so the public knows. So we can uh, decide not to have. So we could decide to scratch that five. too. If it's, you know, if we think it's going to be a pain to kind of remember that, but in my experience, we usually don't have, a, you know, after public comment, we usually don't have many um, well, we people, some, but if we have a we major... We had some issues that have arisen as a school board that have been very challenged by the public, mm -hmm. um, and I think there's obviously a want for people to be able to express their views on something that the board will be discussing, but I also feel in light of trying to maintain um, a working environment for the board, potentially maintaining that um, ability for people to, to say something during public comment is honestly a, the best way for the board to maintain a working meeting going forward. If we right. have people comment on every issue, if we have another contentious issue, that could really be a challenge for just yeah. Opening it up I so think it up. having a single public comment period and not and not giving a public of, yeah not giving an opportunity for every single agenda item that's I mean that's how most town council meetings I've been to work things like that so I think we need to be very mindful of making sure that our agenda is set we've had a number of meetings recently where we've added items at right the but that's all, that's all right it's that's all right but if we're just doing do. mm -hmm. right a one you know like i just feel like we need to make sure that our public is aware of what yeah we're making up would it be possible or do we already say this in the sort of preamble of public comment to say feel free to review tonight's board agenda and comment during public period on any items that would sort of speak to that intention but we wouldn't have to do it in front of every item mm -hmm. before we took action. I think that's the intention of having our agenda posted. Right, is that mm -hmm. people So then we can just strike it. Mm -hmm. I would I think so. so is this document called our model rules of procedure? What is yeah, this? they're <laughs> called uh, Orange Southwest School <laughs> District Board <laughs> Rules of Procedure. Thank that's you. the that's the long name could, for it. But the board's allowed to allow or we say something like the, the discretion, at the discretion of the chair. Oops. Um, what, are, how are you, what are you amending? How are you amending that? Number five? If we want to say, like, we want to keep the option in, but we're not going to necessarily do it after everything at the discretion of the chair. Yeah, like, I don't think we need comments on agenda items before, you know, we'll be allowed. I don't think we need to offer for people to comment on our consent agenda necessarily each time, but I, I do think when we've had discussions about things, giving people the opportunity to weigh in if they've been sitting through our meeting and listening to the work that's being done is, is important to do that. Yeah. 
Right, and sometimes Often if they- will do it only if people are sitting here and they ask. Can yeah. I say something about that? But they, sh they shouldn't necessarily have to ask. There right, and that's what that. they, were, they were talking about in terms of transparency and making sure that the public knows how your meetings run so that if somebody wants to come, they know, okay, if I want to talk about an agenda item, I know that when that agenda item comes up and the board has finished all of their deliberations, I get to make a comment. Mm -hmm. Or if not, if we're not going to do that, then I have the agenda ahead of time, I can make my public comment. And But sometimes I... The reason I kept it in there was because sometimes you might have an agenda item and the public might not really know exactly what it means, but then when they hear the discussion, they're like, oh, wait a minute. And they might then I think we should be offering. Comment. I think we should be offering the space for public comment. I think it needs to be done efficiently and there need to be guardrails on it yeah. so that it does not um, blow up the, the work that needs to be done for the evening. But. I, yeah, I agree with Rachel on that. The I think we're, it's not obvious that people can speak on agenda items currently. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, people will, like you um, referenced there, people might ask, hey, can I say something? But I think overall, the, the environment of our meetings, at least since I've been on the board, is that public, that people get to speak during public comment and then the board the board kind of takes over a conversation throughout the rest of the meeting and if we want to change that I just think we should be more clear about two two people sitting through the the meetings that they can um, you know participate and I I agree it's like you gotta our meetings already go often way way over time so we do have to be, figure out a way to manage the the working environment but we may work, we, get, we may get more community engagement if people feel like they have more in here oh, that's up to our chair yeah and it does say the chair uh well the time allotted to this item will be assigned by the chair or the person responsible for organizing the agenda. So maybe we, maybe instead of allotted to this item, maybe we just say the time will will be, or what it will the the time the uh, time will be to the up to the discretion of the chair. Yes. That's what it says. Yeah. Okay. Well, it yeah. says allotted to this item will be assigned by. So the time will so be. Like, I'll take this like, three minute comment on this. Yeah. yeah. Up to the discretion. Up to the discretion. At the, at the discretion. Or at the discretion. There we go. Better language. Be at the discretion of the chair or the person responsible. Because that way, you know, we, that the ch if it's a contentious item mm -hmm. and we've already mm -hmm. had our discussion, we can say, okay, we're gonna open this up for one minute five public minutes. comment, you mm -hmm. know, or five minutes of public comment on, on this item and right that. And this will, it'll get updated and reprinted and then we can all have it in our binder. So I, um, I appreciate your work on this, Anne. Do you want yeah. me to say a motion? Uh, yeah, so we first need to adopt them as our, that we're gonna use these rules of procedure and the, I don't think we need to say the orientation documentation. We don't, that doesn't need to be in there. Yes, we need rules to of procedure. Move. Move to adopt the whatever this thing's called. <laughs> OSA board rules of procedure. Thank you. Um, as amended, changing on uh, C8 and D3, the term majority. Mm -hmm. and, and oh, with a where? F6. And F6 too. Um, and F6. 
and then and also policies. adopting Robert's rules for small boards. Well, that's in here. Okay. Okay, we'll say yeah. So it's it's in here. So they are our, we're doing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Congress kind of moved to adopt ends changes to the US OSWD board rules of procedure changing on C8 and D3 and F6 to the first majority. I'll second. Neil seconds. Any other, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we've adopted them and the changes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now it's kind of nitpicky, but that way it'll be on our website. The public can go to it. They see what they'll see everything, and should should just make everything very clear. Um, okay. So next up is the retreat. Um, so that is going to that's in July, and usually um, school boards have a retreat. Um, that they do in July to just have some time to maybe work on a project together, to kind of look over the annual agenda for the upcoming year and get that all organized, the plan organized. Um, and we're going to have a new superintendent to kind of get to know, so he'll be there. Um, but I'm curious um, uh, does the board want to how do we want to do that do we want to create a retreat committee do you want to do you want to authorize Hannah and me to and Mike to just sort of plan it would that be on a 10th still would we keep would we uh, the well we've got to schedule it so that's the other thing how you know we could put out a, a you know a Google form with some options. Uh, and so are you, it, is the intent of the retreat that it's a longer duration than a typical meeting? Is that what you're that's saying? That's the other piece we need to talk about is, do we want to do? Is it pretty You know, it's hour? true. Like, if our meetings were two hours, yes, having a retreat that's more hours makes sense. But our meetings are five hours sometimes. <laughs> That's plenty, I think. or should be like we should be able to get our work done. Yeah, like, time. like we, we did like a six to nine, and we did a dinner and had like two or three specific things that we were doing and nothing else. I think that would be plenty of time. Okay, so that so uh, folks would like to have like a regular board time, like six to nine. Yeah, sure. is that what I heard? heard that. Yeah, in the dinner calendar. Already. Okay. And um, over the, the year here, we've had a few topics that have come up that people, I, I mean, there are some just nuts and bolts, so this orient in which I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I can do this without getting authority from the board, and I'm going to talk to Hannah about it, but just getting, this is that annual agenda that you need a microscope to, to <laughs> see, but it basically lays out, you know, our work as a board for the year, so that'll be something that will, and we could review that in the August meeting, but a lot of times that's something that boards do during the retreat, is just look at their annual agenda, maybe make some plans for what are some goals that we want to achieve. Um, but there were also, um, and Hannah's not here to speak to it, but I know um, there's been some disgruntlement with our governance structure. So I don't know um, if the board, at one point the board was talking about maybe do we want to throw our policies out and try some different ones do we and is that something that the board wants to look at during the retreat we have the end stuff that we need to do which um, really 
we're not a huge board, so and and that's the bulk of the work of the board is to really hone in on that and then go back out to the community and make sure we're on the same page and we're, we're reflecting the values that our community has. And we've got a new superintendent, so we've got to talk to him about the ends that we're it would be great to do working the ends. on. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of discussion that needs to go in around the ends, and I think that would be a great way to use our time. I, I would not support using that time to re-examine our governance structure because I think we can get lost in the weeds and lose actually what we're trying to accomplish in re-examining our governance structure. If you look, if you, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. If you look around, if you look around the state, boards are moving to policy governance, not away from it. It's, it puts good guardrails on micromanagement and just because we don't do it awesome right now doesn't mean that it's the wrong thing for us. I think we're a lot better than we were when I joined the board six years ago. Mm -hmm. I think something that um, Michael Clark brought up too during his interview um, was that we have different mission statements at all the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in the ends committee. I think that would be a really good thing for us as a board mm -hmm. to look at too. Mm -hmm. um, trying to come up with a cohesive vision for our schools rather than each having a different vision. Mm -hmm. Right, and that and that feeds right into the ends. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so so ends will be the big piece um, and then just uh, goals and, and planning for the year does that seem mm -hmm. like what folks want to have uh, and we're talking just 6 to 9 p.m. do we want to stick with just the the, the July 10th normally scheduled board meeting time so that we don't have to do a Google count or a, a poll to see what time works best for folks? Yeah, July 10th works. Do people have it already kind of in yeah. their calendars? On the calendar, so, yes. That works. Do you think Michael will have that on his? Um, do you have it on yours? July 10th? Yeah. I think it's on our calendar. Is it on the annual calendar? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be. Yeah, it is on the end. <laughs> Let me on see. Let me get my magnifying glass here. Yeah, July 10th is on we the end. Have a, um, it says board retreat. Where is it supposed to be held? Brookfield. Brookfield. But we can, can, we we can change it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Brookfield's great. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or that PBL. Oh, the PBL room, some somewhere air conditioned. Or not. Where's the whole? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the media center. The or outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe a new outdoor learning center. <laughs> <laughs> um, do people feel like we need a facilitator at all for the ends no. work? Okay. Is, I think our superintendent should come. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, let's make both. sure they're invited. Both. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so where would you like to have it? At the media center at the high school? Or mm -hmm. do you want to have it somewhere else? I think the media center is nice. There's it's, It is air conditioned. Yeah, and it's a little more spacious. It's bigger. It feels bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's fine. Okay. It is on the calendar for July 10th. Um, We're saying six to nine. Six p.m. to nine p.m. Is that is that too long? Is that good, good enough? Six to Do we great. want food? Yes. Do we want okay? Yes. We want food. Um, I nominate sap. Sap. <laughs> mm. yeah. Get some Thai food. Sap. <laughs> Okay, that. <laughs> that's a Wednesday night. I don't know their hours, but I, I bet I they're open, open on Wednesday nights. I think it's Sunday and Monday that mm -hmm. normally nothing is open. So, SAP. And uh, what else was on here? Facilitator topics, how long, evening, day. Um, uh, 
Okay, I think that covers everything, unless somebody else can think of something else that we would need for the retreat. We've got our topic. Our topics are basically going to be ends, which will sort of take in that whole mission issue, and then just goals and planning for the upcoming year. And, and, and then maybe we'll start with a little getting to know you, getting to know each other, because we're getting to know Michael. So does that, does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds great. All right. Uh, so we're, I'm going to have us move on then, unless anybody has any other things they want to say about that. Okay. Just to clarify, that does have to be warned. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am open for people to observe. Right. Because uh, we'll be doing some work. Mm -hmm. The the hens work. Yeah. And we'll we'll um, well I'll meet with we'll do a pre we'll do the agenda meeting so. The, the public knows that, you know, in the beginning we might be doing it, getting to know you, kind of thing, and okay. yeah, so they know <laughs> when we're getting down to business. All right, perfect. Okay, um, so uh, next up we have Amy here, uh, who you have all seen the email from her just introducing herself um, to the school community and to the board. Would you like to share anything? Yeah, I mean, I shared pretty much um, everything with you guys. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, this was great to listen in on um, the board meeting, so I appreciate that. and. Um, I want you to know Heather's been great, super, super helpful, and so have all of the teachers right now. Just to give you kind of a lowdown, I, I mean, since I've only been here just barely two weeks, mm -hmm. I just finally got the Tyler portal up, portal up and working today. So that's the portal that we use for payroll and human resources. So that's a big deal because I think you guys um, brought it in um, and integrated it like probably within the last two years. So it's been a um, kind of empty, you know, so now I'll be filling it with all kinds of HR stuff, uh, which will be great. Um, I've reached out to all the teachers to try to set up appointments with them to kind of get a lowdown on um, what's happening um, in their environment with the students. Um, so I think that's um, going to be really, really helpful. Um, I met with the, um, Flora, who is a participant of the ALICE training for the school, which I think is really, really a, a big part of who I am, because usually HR has some component of safety and risk management um, in their realm. So I look forward maybe to giving you a little more of what I will be doing once I kind of establish uh, what the ground rules will be for the HR department, but it's really exciting to build it from the ground up. And it'll, it'll be part of the web page too, similar to, you know, revising, mm -hmm. since there's no HR department there. So it's fun, and I'm having a great time so far. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, sure. I think that's a great idea. You want to start over there with you? Hi, I'm Rachel Davis. I'm a representative from Braintree. I'm Katja Evans, also from Braintree. I'm Ryan Anderson from Brookfield. Okay. Sarah Hopp from Randolph. Emile Parmelin from Randolph. And me and Kathleen from Randall. Do you know me and Sands? Hey, Sam Hooper, Brookfield. Right. Loved your email. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank and you. then Hannah, have you met Hannah? No, not I not yet. Know. So she's not feeling well tonight. But, right. Uh, I'm sure she'll hop in at some point. And she's she's a Randolph. Rep, yeah, so. and she's a Randolph rep. Yeah. So there's. Yeah, there's four Randolph reps and two from the two smaller terminals. Okay, that's wonderful. Super. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yes, thank I'm, you. I'm originally from Barnard. I, I went okay. to school in the uh, two-room schoolhouse, <laughs> and I'll show my age. 
Um, but yeah, we had just first and second in one side and third and fourth in the other before it was Barnard Academy. Oh, wow. uh, it was just Barnard Central School. And I grew up right across from the Barnard Central School, which uh, was a big white house. We had goats that used to walk across the street <laughs> to the school. So yeah, it's, that's where I came from. And I do still live in Barnard. Even nice. though I did go to Boston <laughs> and got out of town <laughs> for a while. Yeah. Nice. Well, welcome. Yes. And we're really Thank happy you. to have you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up, the quarterly facilities report. Great, everyone. Um, the facilities report is included in your packet. Um, out of um, sensitivity to the fact that we are over time considerably tonight, and also I am in pain, um, <laughs> rather than narrate the report to you, I'm going to point out a few highlights and then open it for any questions. Uh, highlight absolutely is the electrical upgrades at RUHS and the new generator at um, RES. As you know, last year we lost uh, several school days due to electrical failures. So we are committed to having redundancy in our electrical systems so that our electrical works well and we have good generator backups. We're also making nice, some nice improvements this summer, including a universal design walking trail at Braintree. And, um, there is another renovation on here that's critical for ADA compliance, which is the strobes being added to the PAs so that, right, mm -hmm. yeah. people who maybe don't hear well will know that there is something happening. Um, and of course, all of this work is important, so I welcome you to ask any questions at this time. As universal design outdoor access, so it'll be wheelchair accessible. That's wonderful. Yes. yes. We'd like to do that um, at all the campuses ideally. Over time. That would be wonderful. I think okay. the only question I really had related to anything related to this was I saw a line item for um, $150,000 for a new building assessment. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to hear about the results of that at some point? I don't know if it's related to what we're talking about, but. Yes, um, so there is significant cost even to inquiring into how might we and what would it look like and what would it cost? Yeah. And so that number, although it seems really big, <clears throat> is just for that, just for a professional to be able to speak to the board and to um, the district leadership about here's what's possible, here's what it might look like, and here's what it will cost. Okay. So once that is available, yes, it will be put in front of you. Thank you. I think that um, if the public is anxious about anything, it's that idea of a new school and if that means any kind of consolidation effort or anything like that, you know, so. Really looking forward to hearing more about that. Good. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, no, if no further questions, I'll move on to very again briefly. I've included um, the the district received um, over a million, maybe a million and a half in grant funds this year, and I put some highlights together for you just for you to be aware of. Um, one thing I missed on here that I should have included was the yoga that was provided across the district. That was on the mental health grant that I've listed there. Um, the majority of our grant funding comes from Title, um, and that uh, employs over four people full time, plus heavily supports our STEM initiatives across the district. And you're currently sitting in the Braintree STEM classroom. Mm -hmm. That's what all of this is for, and all of that is Title funded as well as major equipment at the high school level, including laser cutters and canvas and poster printers, big gear that students get to use to advance their education. It also funded responsive classroom professional development for all staff yesterday, June 18th. Uh, that was a $100,000 investment for that. And so we're very grateful for that funding. Um, we were also a selective recipient of the Stronger Connections Grant, three-year grant, 80,000 each year. 
and I've listed some of the things that we funded with that this year. Um, the mental health grant is ending. Uh, we had that for two years and that is over. And it was great to have the yoga across the district with that and several other things such as behavior intervention in multiple ways with that grant. Um, looking uh, to find ways to continue to fund those initiatives and am targeting, um, there's a way to extend ESSER past the expiration date. So I do anticipate being able to continue the mental health um, initiatives for another year using those funds. And uh, I've listed here also the SHARE grant, which is how we funded all the HVAC on this campus where you are tonight. Um, they gave us $250,000, ended up being a $340,000 project, but most of that funding came from this grant, which uh, funded all the mini splits. So Braintree is fully air conditioned, which is why we are hosting the summer program that's serving uh, 80 district students from around the district here on this campus this year because it's the only campus that's fully air conditioned in the district. I neglected to put on this report. Also, we uh, utilized several other grants to upgrade our kitchens across the district. So this is an important area of funding and I just wanted to update you on that we do actively pursue grants and effectively utilize grants to supplement the district local funds. I also want to acknowledge and thank you for all the work that you do on pursuing and acquiring these grants for the district. So yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thank you. you very much. My pleasure. And I think I'm done for that section. Okay, and I had moved um, the EL report that we need to approve is 2.7. So this, remember, we got at the last uh, May meeting when Lane was still uh, with us and not on vacation. Um, one thing that I did as I was going through it realized was um, in some ways, the board is out of its lane um, with going into negotiations with non-unionized employees. That's really, this is a monitoring report that gives the superintendent who has that responsibility, the guardrails within which he's supposed to work, and we as a board have taken over that process. <laughs> um, hopefully, I mean, to me, it means we're, that we're we're on a we're on a little bit of a shaky line there. It really we need to stay in our in our wheelhouse. Um, is this in reference to the bus? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this this is looking back. So this is not you know this is the past year, but. Lane just sort of encouraged us to go ahead and get started with that when mm -hmm. in reality if we're following our policies this is that is not the role of the board the mm -hmm. the administration is is doing that operational so we've thing. done that previously though right we what? had yeah. yes yeah, yes time. and I'm not sure why the board felt like it needed to get involved in that I, think, I, I feel like I remember that conversation and I think if I'm remembering correctly, it was that it would have been it would be good, like good goodwill, goodwill to have the board included in that discussion. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think previously we had not mm -hmm. been doing that with them, and it seemed like it was um, exclusionary to the to the bus drivers that the board was not negotiating terms of contract. That's what I can remember. So yeah. do you think it was it was suggested on goodwill the board be included yeah. and be the ones that do that negotiation, but it sounds like, as you're saying, as we're seeing here, it really is not a place to be right. Um, right. working. So, I mean, we could look at changing that and saying that the board is going to do the non-unionized and the consultants and the contract workers, but remember, that's what we hired. We hired a superintendent to manage the operations of the district. And that's really what this is. I, I, mean, know, I have no intention of changing this 
themselves. No, but if we wanted to keep it, if we felt like, if we felt like, do, you know, having this relationship with our transportation department was of value in that sense of negotiating, we could have a line in here that says benefits to non-unionized employees with the exception of one but again, like you said, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope, slope, slope and you see how complicated it gets yeah. because there's budgeting, there's, and really. We engage at the recommendation of our superintendent, and I don't, I don't see how there's anything wrong with that. We were following our policy until our superintendent asked us to get involved in that particular thing, and we are. And we're not doing it in, in a vacuum without input from our administration. Right. But it's not opening the door. But I think we need to just be aware and. It could be, open. any door could be open to non unionized people at, at the discretion of the superintendent, basically, who's, who's been delegated this role. And he asked us to be involved in this in this time. It doesn't mean we're going to be involved going forward in everything, but he asked us for a, for a particular exception to this. I, I don't see the problem. Yeah, I was just being cautionary that we do need to, when anything comes up, we do need to kind of look back at our policies and say, okay, what do our policies say on this? And is this yeah. well, the role your, of the what's board? What's your reasoning for going against right. the Right, what is the role of the board and, yeah. and what is the role of the superintendent? I mean, should we really even be voting on, on the bus driver contract? I, mean, that's... I think we started that. forward yeah. if this is brought to us again we have to then have the superintendent tell us why yeah. well and that's the superintendent that. delegating his we've hired the superintendent to do a job and right. I think we need to remember and the superintendent that doesn't then turn around and delegate to us oh hey you do this job because yeah. I don't want to do this part of my job. Well, I don't. I did, I, and, I did, and then I didn't yeah. hear that when he requested that. I think it's far more collaborative. Yeah. yeah. Our relationship, our relationship with our superintendent should be far more collaborative than like right. heavy-handed and top-down. It should be a give and take. I, and I think the idea that right. like we're his boss and well, right. yes, and right, and we're working well, together for the betterment of our community. Right, so we could be advisory, or he, could, mm -hmm. you know, he could have us come in as advisory, or we could look at it as being a part of that process as a as a direct inspection, so that we can see that, you know, our comparables looked at, you know, are our employees being treated fairly? What are the processes that are in place when determining wages? I mean that could be another way to look at it as well. So, but again, this is this is from uh, last year, Lane looking backward. Um, and I move that we accept policy 2.7 on report. Okay, second. we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, who seconded? Thank you. All right. Then we come to the um, board self evaluation. Um, so this is where we're. Are we skipping the second grade of D3? Oh, whoops. Yeah, we have uh, D3. So this is one of our required. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she would be out. Yeah, we're on we're on uh, monitoring the board board self evaluation, and then we are doing then we're doing the second read because that's a that's a district required policy. Okay, are we all on the same page? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so board self evaluation. Remember again, this is again for the board to hold itself accountable to making sure that we are following our our policies. So those would be the governance policies, the the um, for the ones that are in the fours, and then the um, delegation policies, which is where we delegate a lot to the superintendent. Um, and so, and we are, we've got two of them, which I did double check on here, and it does say 3.2 and 3.4. 
And I guess we do 3.3 in July. So that's how we have it on the annual agenda. So that's why there were two. Um, so did everyone get a chance to kind of look at it? And again, what we're looking at is, you know, um, are, we, are we following this policy? Hopefully we're doing it most of the time. And we can think of, um, you know, examples of how we're doing that. So uh, was there, and with 3.2, do you guys want me? I'm not going to. It will take us way too long if I read through everything. But did anyone see any issues with um, uh, it? Does it's actually now that I see what I put on here, um, the board and then we didn't talk about that for our retreat. But maybe that'll be something that we look at for when we're looking at our goals and plans for next year. But um, our policy basically says the board will view successful student uh, superintendent performance as demonstrated by accomplishment of board ends and avoidance of board prescribed means. And as a board, we've struggled with that, but we haven't, we didn't actually end up doing an evaluation with Lane, other than the fact that he did follow our policies and, he, and we did accept all of his monitoring reports and we accepted his ENDS report. So in that sense, we evaluated him and his performance was fine, according to our policies. Okay. Um, but I know as a board, people have struggled with um, how we want to evaluate the superintendent. But in our policies, this is how we're doing it. Um, and I don't know if later on or maybe when we just, just think about it for the retreat because mm -hmm. our policies say this is how we evaluate them. In the past, there was, and I was on that committee, um, the board was wanting to use a different process. We now have an HR person who can, um, who can kind of help us maybe think about evaluation um, and, and kind of look at how we're doing it and maybe work with us if we um, are feeling like our our policies now and the process for evaluation is not satisfactory for the board. But it's just something for people to think about. Okay. Um, and then we would have to change it in policy because right now this is what our policy says and so we follow it. Mm -hmm. um, but there may be a way to amend it or anyway. But just something to think about. So that was the only thing that I, on 3.2, that I kind of had um, kind of highlighted. And then just um, this uh, on number one, uh, the board never giving instructions to persons who report directly or indirectly to the superintendent. Again, with this veering over into negotiations, mm -hmm. we sort of gave the director of transportation directions. directions. Well, I think Heather did. Um, Heather did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll say Heather did that. Um, but again, you see where that gets the board in this little bit of a, a quandary about are we following our policy or not. Um, so. We just need to be aware of that. Um, anybody else see anything in any of these policies? Uh, how about in uh, 3.4? This is, again, this is the one on evaluation of the superintendent's performance. So again, as we think about, we've, we're getting a new superintendent. 
even if we just look through this um, policy to kind of look at what it says in policy we're judging our superintendent on um, because I know that's been an issue that people have struggled with as as members of this board um, so we need to kind of again that may be a topic that we want to make sure it gets on that I think that's a great idea to as a annual for agenda yep. or the meeting also because um, we do have a new superintendent coming in and we should be clear on what we're going to be how well, we're going to be evaluating their process right well and as of now this is it so can we put that on for for the meeting for the um, retreat yeah yeah and and do we want to ask Amy as the person who might have some expertise in employee evaluation? I mean, personally, I think it might be valuable just for us as a board to discuss first what it is that we need, mm -hmm. and then we can bring that to Amy. Okay. I think this could be maybe like a half hour, 45 okay. minute conversation. So we'll add it to the retreat. We will, that. Do we want to put it at the end of the retreat time? Wherever you feel it's appropriate. Okay. Because we don't, do we, do we want to do it with Michael? I think that's yeah. fair. Or, yeah, he's there. Yep. Okay. Nothing secret about it. No. Okay. Good. I, I think that's a good thing so I'm I'm are we good in terms good. of yep. we can refer to if, if we sorry if we involve Amy don't we have to direct Michael to, to ask <laughs> right that's true yeah, I think we yeah again yeah for yeah, just a discussion what we need as a board I think we've gone through it we can kind of figure out what it is and what was helpful with this last round and go from there and then into the session later. Okay. All right. Uh, alrighty. So we looked at those two policies. Um, next up is uh, policies decisions regarding the district governance. So again, this is a second read of a required policy. So these are ones that um, if you remember in our policies, we have EL 2.9 that requires the superintendent make sure that all of our policies that are required from the state of Vermont or the federal government are all up to date and vetted and ready to go. So um, this is the second read on that. So this is policy D3 for electronic communications between employees and students. Um, please note that only the first three pages are the actual policy. The remainder of it is the district acceptable use policy, which we would consider part of our procedure mm -hmm. for compliance with this policy, which we've enclosed for your um, knowledge so that you would uh, be aware of this as this is a greatly expanded AUP than we previously used. This acceptable use policy is meant to keep the district safe um, from uh, any possible liability for loss of data and also to protect our employees um, from any loss of data. But the actual policy as compelled by the state is the first three pages. And we do need a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Sarah. I made a motion, Sarah seconded to approve this policy. Okay. D3. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor of accepting? Aye. 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 All right. Passes. Uh, legislative update. Oh, I've combined the legislative update with the superintendent's report, okay. so I can go through it pretty quickly. Highlights, huh? highlight reel. Yeah. What? Highlight reel. Okay, highlight reel. 
Um, I listed for you all our graduates this year. So we have from the high school, we have um, 56 graduates, total 342 students this year. Uh, the Randolph Technical Center had 116 program completers. I've bulleted those out for you so you can see which programs these are. Brain, Braintree this year had 96 students with 18 students culminating sixth grade. Workfield had 78 students with four students culminating sixth grade. And Randolph Elementary had 300 students and 38 students culminated sixth grade. Um, and then our legislative updates are regarding the open meeting law changes that were sent to you via email. I thought they should be in the board minutes, however, that we included those in the packet. Um, no real significant changes for us. We're already doing hybrid, and we have the infrastructure to do hybrid. Um, it is nice to know that we don't have to, however, that's basically the update. And then the yield bill I thought was important to include for you. You may have heard that on June 6, Governor Scott vetoed the yield bill after it had passed both the Senate and the House. But on June 17th, the Senate floor announced that the bill passed the veto of the governor notwithstanding. So basically, they have um, said his veto doesn't stand. Yeah, they have the supermajority for that. Yeah, and so I've provided you some bullets there for what that will mean for our taxpayers as far as their um, tax rate and funding for schools. Any questions? Okay. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, these are just things that the board has to approve. Anybody so find anything? <laughs> wait, 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 really quick. Uh, does that also include the, the contracts. contracts I've signed? I just want to yeah. say on the new hires, the really nice list of new hires here. Some of them aren't really new, but I've signed on them because they were grant funded. Oh, yeah. So I was wondering, it's not on that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's because they're funded by a grant, and I signed, uh, the, we got the grant, so I signed for it. Great. But one to highlight is um, Ernesto Villobos. Uh, he's going to be the new music teacher for elementary. Oh, nice. And some of you may have heard him perform locally and uh, gotten some reviews. He performed for the high school students, got rave reviews. Uh, he's master's level. Um, really, really highly qualified, and we're excited about him. And also, he brings a little diversity, so yay. Um, and then Samuel Lapointe, he's replacing Lance Madsey. Um, you know, really important position, I think, in our district. It was hired. Everyone on this list is important. I just wanted to let you know that if you have any questions about any of these new hires, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. So we're going to move. So moved. So, moved. so the consent agenda as a whole, do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Sarah. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor of passing the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, all right. We, we've looked at the superintendent report. Any questions? Uh, financials, do we have a final, final number yet on, on so what will be going, what, will, what are surpluses, I'm, or not, it's probably not quite ready. Yet. It's not quite ready, but we anticipate approximately $800,000 will be going into the reserve. Okay. Is that less than? Yeah. Yes, yeah. last year it was $1,200,000. So, but we have some big expenses. We sure did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unexpected. Yes. Okay. Some um, shocking, the unexpected ones. Yes. The electrical problems. Yes. So, action recap. Uh, there was the earlier stuff with the. Uh, Heather's going to work with the transportation folks and Robin to, to take a look at the implications of the salary change or hourly pay changes. Um, I've got the retreat notes. Hannah and I will get together with Michael for the agenda meeting for that and we'll put that all together. Uh, I will follow up with Kyle and with Todd to get the website up to date and 
and everything on on the website that we've approved. Uh, what else? The ownership do? linkage committee will meet with you now. Oh, right. This. And come up with student representation stu process. process and procedure for adding students to the board. Um, make changes to the equity policy. You can look at that. Or so we might add that at a future meeting. Okay. Yeah, I think what he was asking for was for some proposed changes. And right. he was going to send you his presentation. Yes. And you were for me to disseminate. So we'll do that. In a research paper. Yes. So I suspect at the next meeting we would form a committee in August. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Um, I think that'll move along. It's very effective air conditioning in here. Yeah, really good. Yeah, works great. Really well. Uh, and that's and that was and that was it. Uh, I don't. I have. I don't know what this executive I, session. I think, I think that that's a bus, carryover from last I think year. It was a bus negotiation yeah. discussion that we then uh, had in the beginning. Yeah, but there was personnel, real estate, and students. That's just the that's just, no, that's just that's the items the that we could that we could oh, 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 recommendation. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, the that we could go in. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adjourn at eight thirty. Eight thirty. All right.